Ubisoft Ghost Game Edition. Uh, I took a look at the demo for Angerfoot, a fast-paced first-person arcade-style shooter from developer Free Lives and published by Devolver Digital. I'll probably check out several games not featured in the recent spat of non-E3 E3 content, but this game's trailer full of cartoon characters getting stomped on set to hardcore and gabber beats was a real standout in an event that didn't have a ton of things that piqued my interest. And this does sort of grab you by the collar and rattle you to a relentless bass drum. I guess this game already existed in some fashion as a prototype over at Itch, but Devolver is helping the devs turn it into a full game, so you can also look up that and play the uh, first iteration of it. It's conceptually very simple. You are literally just a guy that kicks really hard and you sprint through a series of mildly connected levels consisting of apartment buildings and sewer tunnels, kicking and shooting a variety of villainous anthropomorphic goons. It gets more complicated and challenging as it goes and also you become better at it as you go. I'm glad that it doesn't insist on some extensive tutorial. It doesn't stop you to explain what does what. You just learn by reacting to it. I think the only prompts that come up are the ones that tell you how to kick and how to shoot. You can die pretty easily after one or two hits, but it usually comes with a lesson of sorts. You think, oh, all right, so I won't do that next time, lest I have to watch my enemies dance over my corpse. Truly, there is little else that is this demoralizing. I imagine there will come comparisons to games like Hotline Miami, which are not unfounded, though this has more of a, I don't know, pseudo 90s Euro Club aesthetic than a 80s exploitation film one. Lots of track suits, neon colored windbreakers, and a Nokia brick. I do think its attitude and more visceral gameplay and pacing differentiated more than enough. I was never good enough at those to feel unstoppable, to, to revel in the power fantasy of it all, but I certainly got there with this one. Certainly had my boat floated. It's a pretty substantial demo too, it's not like half the first level and then cut to the wishlist screen. You get several levels and a boss fight, and after each one, I was was pleasantly surprised that it just kind of kept going. I realized I was just replaying levels because kicking doors into lizard men and watching it splinter into pieces and knock them over into a table or a pile of debris had yet to lose its entertainment value. It just feels kind of great, just kicking everything in my path to migraine inducing music. <laughs> With each new level, they introduce some new element that gets carried over to each following level, like a new enemy type, weapon, or environmental hazard. I didn't get the best sense of how it will be implemented, but I guess you unlock different shoes that have modifiers on them, like one that awards you ammo with each successful kill. I can't imagine the game would be all that long, even in a full version, so this may grant it some added replayability. It doesn't seem like there's much going on in the story department. I think uh, the protagonist is just an intense sneakerhead and one of his shoes is stolen so he goes on a warpath to retrieve it. This is expressed in a sort of interactive cutscene where you can goof around with the game's wacky physics and that seemed to be the sole moment of respite in a demo that felt like one frenzied sprint. I wouldn't even say this is necessarily the type of game I'd ordinarily go for. I like to explore, I like to wander, I often break the experience of games because I just want to slowly stroll around and look at everything. I want to point to things and say, hey, that's neat. I mean, if I was racing through this, I might have missed this guy. Hello. Ooh. And while you are timed to create a record of how quickly you made it through a level, I pretty much just ignored that aspect and surprisingly found a lot to enjoy about its atmosphere. Aha! I make my own stealth gameplay. Because when you're just walking around rooms without enemies, the music sort of dynamically acknowledges that, and the beat becomes muffled, as though you're just hearing it through your neighbor's wall. And then once you burst into another room full of danger, it cranks back up. But just the, the scummy vibe of everything is really charming. It's like a gnarly, violent slum rendered with cutesy Muppet Show design, with some surreal touches as well, like enemies spraying vibrant purple blood. I think more so than me, liking the design of it all. It's a game where everything seems very deliberate and considered. Like as goofy as it is, there was a lot of thought put into what would keep it moving and encourage 
you to want to try for more and more ridiculous maneuvers. I was looking over the reactions to it on Steam and I see a lot of suggestions that want to push it into being something more traditional, even in small ways like allowing you to collect ammo and reload your weapon instead of discarding it when it's empty. And I imagine that's something they didn't go with for a reason. Overall, it strikes me as a very confident and competent game that knows pretty well what it wants to be visually and mechanically. It wants to make kicking dudes as fun and exciting as it can, and it's not doing a bad job at that. And I am the owner of a lifetime supply of patience and love. Got a love what you do. The goddess in red, this is what she said. That's line from below, a mass is the god. Yeah, the gutters clogged like a foaming mass. 